Welcome. I'm Tom Hicks, Chairman of the United States Election Assistance Commission, and we're here to discuss a series of episodes on things that will be affecting the election. And joining me here today is Terry Al Menace. Thank you, Commissioner Hicks. I am Terry Al Menace. I'm Director of Census and Voting Programs at Asian Americans Advancing Justice, AAJC. We were founded in 1991, and we are a national, nonpartisan, nonprofit organization that works to advance and protect the human and civil rights of Asian Americans and to build a fair and equitable society for all. We do this through public education, public policy, litigation, research, and advocacy. And voting is one of the key program areas that we have and that we work in. Can you describe a little bit about how, you, how your organization helps voters uh, exercise their right to vote? Sure. So uh, before I get to that part, I think it would be helpful to talk a little bit about the Asian American electorate. Okay. Uh, uh, the Asian American community is the fastest growing community in America today. And each election cycle, we add significant numbers to the Asian American electorate. However, at the same time, we still continue to see a persistent gap between the political participation of Asian American voters and that of non-Hispanic whites. Uh, the gap is usually about 15 to 20 percent. Uh, mm -hmm. difference and one of the major reasons we see for that is the language barrier. Three of every four Asian Americans speaks a language other than English at home and about a third of the community is um, has difficulty with English language is limited English proficient. If you look at Asian American adults that uh, number goes even higher to about 44 percent of the community. So therefore we know that language um, is a key factor in why Asian Americans don't participate at the same rate. Um, we know that voting materials are very complex, even for native speakers. Uh, we know the voting process is very complex. And for first time voters, particularly those who have newly naturalized, it can be very confusing and daunting to Asian American voters. So a lot of the work that we do at Asian Americans Advancing Justice AJC is to try to break down uh, the language barriers and to protect Asian American voters against voting discrimination. Okay. So one of the things that we have worked on for the 2016 election is to create in-language fact sheets around section, both section 203 of the Voting Rights Act, which requires certain jurisdictions to provide language assistance through the voting process, and section 208 of the Voting Rights Act, which requires the jurisdictions allow voters to bring someone in of their choice to vote and to assist them in the voting process. In addition, how can voters contact your organization? Sure. Uh, we run in conjunction with APIA Vote, a Asian language hotline, 1-888-API-VOTE. We have uh, assistance in English, Chinese, both Cantonese and Mandarin, um, Vietnamese, Tagalog, Korean, Hindi, Urdu, and Bengali. Wow. And this hotline is live now and will be running through the uh, through election day and people can call um, and get assistance in their language. Okay. Will that be across the country or is that just yes. those 30 states? Uh, it is across the country. Anyone can call in. Okay. Great. Um, is there anything else you would like the audience to know about your organization? Uh, sure. One other um, factor I think that we are really concerned about for this upcoming election is that it is the first presidential election without the full strength of the Voting Rights Act in place due to the Supreme Court decision in Shelby v. Holder. Uh, this is a particular concern for Asian Americans because uh, in addition to being the fastest growing population in this country, the South actually represents the region with the fastest growing Asian American population across the entire country. So to the extent that we no longer have the full protection of Section 5, um, in uh, particularly uh, southern uh, states that were covered, uh, we are worried about seeing potential shenanigans happening. We know that as populations uh, emerge or increase to a point where they may be um, a politically viable voice, that's when uh, things start happening to try to perhaps uh, reduce that voice. And in addition to the uh, calls uh, for additional observers of these elections, we are very concerned. Um, we have actually are, are about to release a fact sheet that we're done in collaboration with the National Disability Rights Network around our concern of voter challengers at the polls because we know that the people that get singled out for these types of challenges are language minority voters, disability vo voters, uh, people who will be challenged simply by the way they look or the perception of who they are um, as to whether or not they're eligible to vote. 
Okay. Um, so overall, you want to say, are you saying that you, your organization wants to help voters to Absolutely. exercise their right to vote? Yes. Um, I want to thank you again for participating in this uh, episode on or the series that we're having to educate voters on their rights and their responsibilities for uh, the 2016 election cycle. And with that, I want to say goodbye. Thank you. All right.